In this video, I will show you how you can perform data entry in Google Sheet using a simple HTML form that supports dependent dropdowns, dependent fields, and computed fields. And since the application is fully responsive, you can use this on your mobile device also. Here, you can see the application with a table view and add button on the top. Let me perform one entry here. I will choose a category. Here, the item dropdown depends on the above chosen category. You can also notice that when I select an item, it automatically populated the rate field. So the rate field depends on the selected item. Next, enter quantity, and you can see it computes the amount also. Let's fill in the rest of the form and submit it. and the record has been submitted successfully. You can view the created record by clicking this view icon. Let's try editing the selected record. And here you can see it was updated successfully. Let me also show you how it is going to look like on a mobile device. Now let's do a code walkthrough. If you are liking this video, then please consider subscribing to my channel. First of all, open the script editor by going to Extensions and then App Script. Let me open the editor and the application side by side. Here you can edit the record sheet name and ID column name that you have in the spreadsheet. Below, I have defined a function that performs crude operation. I have taken help from a third-party library named Tomatsu. This is the function that returns sheet data as an array of JavaScript objects. We will use this to fetch data for dropdowns. In this block, we return the evaluated index.html file. This is a helper function that is used to import code from different files using scriptlet tag. Like here in the index.html file, you can see I have used the include function inside scriptlet tag to import evaluated HTML code at this place. This lets us bring code from different files into a single file and greatly helps in organizing the code. Now, this is the main file responsible for rendering our application. Inside the head tag, we are importing Vue.js and Bufy CSS framework. You can browse its documentation. I will post the link in the description box. I am using this for styling our table and form. Every component is fully responsive, meaning you will get a nice experience on a mobile device also. The whole page is composed of navbar, table, form, and a detail view. You can easily customize the navbar, change the logo and the title. Then we have a form component inside a modal. It means the form will open in a modal. Let's view its code. It contains a bunch of form inputs. To customize this form, you need to edit its attributes like type, name, label, and validation. Now let's discuss how to do dependent dropdown things. So here you can see I have got two dropdown fields category, and items. The option source for the category field is category options, 
and for the item field is items. Both are computed properties. Let me show that to you in js.html file. It contains JavaScript code. When the application is mounted, it calls getNested dropdown. It is basically fetching sheet data in the nested dropdown tab. The return data is an array of JavaScript objects. We are storing the array in a variable name dd. Then, inside the computed block, we are performing map and filter operation to get the unique categories. Notice this category matches with the category in the nested dropdown tab. Now, when the category is selected, we access that category and filter the array items containing the selected category. Then we perform a map operation to get items. And then the item dropdown is populated with these filtered items. Again, notice that this item key should match exactly with the item here in the nested dropdown tab. Now the next one is the rate field. And here you can see when the item selection changes, this function runs. It finds the selected item in the nested dropdown. Then it updates the rate field with the rate in the found item. And when we update the quantity here in the form, it also computes the amount. Here you can see in the code also. When the input value changes, it runs this code to compute the amount. Then we have a radio field for payment method and a text area field for notes. You can check all other supported fields here. I will post its link in the description box. Here it is very important to keep notes of all the field names used in this form. Because the same needs to be plugged in the table view and detail view. Let's come to table view. To customize this, you need to edit the table columns. The editable attributes are field, label, and width. Ensure that the field matches exactly with the name attribute in the form. And also notice I have used currency and date modifier to format it appropriately. Now let's come to a detailed view. Here also I have used the field names from the form. I am also conditionally checking if the key is date or rate or amount and then we format them differently using modifiers. Now, how do you set this up for yourself? First, you need to make a copy of the spreadsheet from the link given in the description below. Then, open the script editor by going to Extensions and then App Script. Now, we need to deploy this to get the web app URL. For that, click on the Deploy button and then choose New Deployment. Then select Web App as the deployment type. In the description, you can type anything. In the Execute As section, choose Me. In the Access section, choose Only Myself and then hit Deploy. This will ask you to authorize the code. Go ahead and grant all the permissions required by the app. When the deployment completes, you will be presented with the URL. Open it to check if everything is working fine.
Now, suppose you edited the script again. In that case, you will need to deploy the script again. First, save the script. Then go to Deployment and choose Manage Deployment. Click on the pencil icon and choose a new version. Then hit the Deploy button. This way, your web app access URL will not change. You can reach out to me for customization needs. If you liked the video, then please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.